So, who remembers the E1M4B and E1M8B that John Romero made for Doom? How long ago was it now? It wasn't that long ago, was it? 17, 16? At some point in the not so distant past, John Romero made some new levels for Doom. And the implication was that he was making a new game, which went to Kickstarter and then, and then went off Kickstarter very quickly because they, they weren't happy with it at that moment in time. I don't know how far that's got, but in the meantime, John has made some more levels for Doom and he's released them under the Megawad. I think he's. It's referred to as a megawatt, isn't it? If it's a, or just what a full episode. He's released a full episode's worth of levels for Doom as a sort of an unofficial expansion, but also official because it's John Romero. Anyway, enough waffle. It's been released now. So here is a box, and you probably already know what's in this box. This is from Limited Run, who we've seen before. I think they're the ones who did Hotline Miami. But I could be wrong about that. They did something anyway that I have. It, was it Hollow Moon or was it Shadow Warrior 2? One of the two they did. Maybe it was both. Who, who can say? Uh, and there's not really much to see on this box. So let's just tear it asunder and see what is inside. Lots of bubble wrap. There we go. Well, that is not exactly how I wanted that to go, but we've done it now. And that was an extremely disappointing throw. Good grief, at me. Get over there. Okay. Um, we'll come to that in a second. And dispose of the box. Ooh, what are you? Well, this is uh, actually a very good piece of design because it has no words on it. Well, it does, it has a couple of words up here, but it's got no title on it. Yes, that's what I like. I like it when things don't have titles on, just to let the artwork speak for itself. Not that this will be on star shelves or anything, but who cares? It's the principle that matters. So, let's have a look on the side to find out exactly what this is. Is that upside down? No, it's not. It's just in there, it's a very strange typeface. It's called Sigil. And it's got little demons and things on it, and it's got a big demon on the front. I believe that's... well, we'll find out on the back. I don't want to uh, get it wrong on YouTube. That would be terrible. Uh, yes, sigil, sigil, sigil. Sigil. <laughs> no messing around here, I think. Uh, whichever way you put it, it's uh, sigil. Presumably, this is the sigil in question. So I imagine that will become clear when you start playing the game, which incidentally is free online. And this is just the big box copy because I like Doom a lot, even though I don't have a big box copy of Doom itself. Hint, hint. So let's have a look at the back. What do it say? You're going straight to hell. The original Icon of Sin, John Romero, sorry it's at a bit of an angle, but I need to be able to read it, returns to his roots in Sigil, a free megawad. Ha, ah, I was right. For the original 1993 Doom. So it's not for Doom 2 this, it's it's for Doom itself. Uh, and this time you're going straight to hell. After killing the spider demon at the end of E4M8 unto the cruel. I remember that. Vaguely. I've only played E4 once. And it was uh, a bit... Well, it was kind of fun, but it was a bit all over the place. Mm, your next stop is Earth. You must save it from Hellspawn. Glitched. Oh, sorry, I've skipped a line there. You must say it from Hellspawn that is causing unimaginable carnage. So it's a little bit like the second act of Doom 2. Except it takes place in Doom 1. And you're not going to hell in that case, you're going to Earth. Make your mind up, John. So, but Baphomet glitched the final teleporter, damn Baphomet. We've not even heard of him yet. Or was he in the episode 4? With his hidden sigil, whose eldritch power brings you to even darker shores of hell. Oh, right, so you do go to hell. Do you go to the shores of hell? I thought I'd already been there. <laughs> Flipping hell. But don't. You fight through this stage, blah, 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 blah. Rip and tear. Oh, so that must be the sigil. So what's that then? Is that just a shape? Who is knowing? Sigil is a free mod for the original Doom and is distributed. It's a mod, right? Look. 
all you stinking pernickety pedants, Doom fans. I remember once, uh, in fact I shall unseal this, oh, let's, not, let's not beat around the bush here. I remember once referring in a YouTube comment, I believe it was, to a Doom wad as a mod. Or saying something like, Doom is one of the most moddable games in existence, or something, something like that. Saying that Doom basically had a massive modding thing. And a bunch of people jumped on it. It might have been one person, actually. Or it might have been two. I can't remember now. It was a while ago. And they were like, it's not a mod, it's a wad. <sighs> well, Romero has spoken. And if you dare argue with Romero, I mean, come on, you just... <laughs> Blowing against the wind there, aren't you? So, it's final. A wad is a mod. Oh, that's a good feeling box. So, I must point out initially, I don't know if you can tell, the uh, lighting isn't really helping. Oh no, there we go, look. Uh, there, look, it's embossed. Which is just beautiful. What we like to see. Oh, why can't I make them two part? It would be so much nicer. Oh, well, that's a proper old school box, isn't it? This this could be, and I know that's the whole point, but it could very well be of the time. The only thing is missing, system requirements. Where are they, John? Come on. John's graphic designers. Unbelievable. There's no system requirements, no barcode. Not even a little message that says this requires the full registered version of Doom to play. <coughs> Can't fucking get it out either. I'm trying to be very careful with it. Good grief. Oh. <laughs> it literally just slid out. Oh, look at that. That is just beauty, that, isn't it? It's got a slightly different cover on the disc. There was also a extra big box that I couldn't afford, um, which had like a little pewter statue of John's head. By the way, I'm referring to him as John and not Romero. That's because he's in the Big Box PC Game Collectors group, so he's, my, he's, a, he's a good friend. Oh my god. Right, let's, uh, <laughs> let's start with the feelies. Although it doesn't seem like there's very many. It would appear that there is... Uh, oh yeah, look, there we go. The artist in question is this man here, Christopher Lovell. I imagine there's going to be a lot of... Uh, Giger esque I mean, I'm, that's the vibe I'm getting from this. We're getting a bit of Giger, a bit of Bosch as well, Harriner's Bosch. Probably going to be a bit like that on his uh, website there. That will be his oeuvre. So uh, if you like that sort of stuff, then that's probably the place to go. That will be uh, Lovell Art on Instagram. There you go. In case you didn't catch it before. So that can go back in the that? I hope that's the right way around. And let's have a look at this. Let's just get it unsealed. Uh, I want to keep this close to my chest though. It's likely you've already seen it and I just didn't catch it on camera. It's got a, a funny band around it that you unpick. Because there's actually multiple items included in it. Actually, no, 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 I'll, I'll, I'll do that after. Yeah, there's multiple items included in this, so uh, you know what? Let's just take the knife to it. <laughs> It'll be easier. I've got to be careful not to cut anything that doesn't want to be cut. Pure magic. Right, let's move that out of the way. Look. Oh, and this has all got its own stinking seal on it. CD ROM seals, classically being incredibly difficult to remove. You've got to like pick it at the side because there's nowhere really to make an incision with your knife. Or swizzers, or uh, lightsaber, or satellite defense platform. Oh my goodness, this TD doesn't have a spine label. What's that all about? Come on, John. Get it together. What are you playing at? There's loads of stuff missing off this. This is sloppy. Sloppy. Oh goodness, even the plastic sticking to my fingers. Right, there we go, there's the disc. What's on the back? Uh, Romero 1, Mind Any Weapon. That's not a sentence. 13th Floor, Builder 2, The Path of Badass. These are all the music tracks. That's cool, isn't it? What's inside? <gasps> Two discs? That's interesting, I wasn't expecting that. Who's this guy? 
Buckethead is a legend. Oh, sorry. I've got to read this upside down now. Hooray! Buckethead is a legendary guitar virtuoso who plays. Uh, da, 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 sorry, I'm going to have to move it around because I can't read it. Played professionally for decades, beginning with. Da, 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 da. Ooh, voted one of the top 10 fastest guitar shredders of all time. 50 fastest guitarists of all time. <laughs> is that just because he runs fast? It doesn't necessarily mean, mean he plays guitar fast. Mm, oh my goodness, 300 studio albums! Yikes! This guy is on fire! No wonder. <laughs> You'd have to be the fastest guitarist in the world, wouldn't you, if uh, you could release that much stuff? That is nuts, though. So there's your disc, and uh, one would assume that is a game disc, which means the other disc, one would assume... Well, it's not really clear, because the discs uh, are not labelled in any way, shape or form. Which, while I do appreciate titleless design on the, the outer packaging, when it comes to the discs, that becomes a usability issue, unfortunately. But uh, uh, ugh, I don't have a disk drive to hand, so I can't really tell you. I will have to update you later. Uh, so that can go back in now. Because why not? Uh, let's just have a look at this little thing that slipped in with the box, in the outer box, box, box. Whatever. It's a playing card. It's a limited, limited run playing card. I probably have another one of these somewhere, if I've got another limited run release. So, uh... That's cool. I like it. It's a nice little extra going in the box. What else we got? I'm saving the best for last here. We got a sticker. We like stickers. They always seem to include stickers in uh, big box releases of the jour. And that can go in the box. And we've got a Romero Games sticker. That could uh, potentially go on something. I'm sure I can find a, a home for that. And now for the piece de resistance. Oh. Now, is the whole... I am I'm, I'm so curious, and again, I'm going to have to update you with this afterwards because I don't have a floppy disk drive to hand either. But, is it likely? How... oh. You know what? <laughs> I'm a flipping dum dum. It's not a floppy disk. I don't know what it is, but it's not a floppy disk. Look, look, there's, it's smooth, and that is. Hang on, does that come out? What the heck do I do with this thing? It looks like this bit comes out, but oh, hang on, does it? Does it? Ah! There we are. Look. <laughs> I cannot believe it. And I was just about to say. Can the whole wad be on this one disc? Because discs aren't very big. But um, they fit the whole shareware episode of Doom onto one disc, so it could be done. That's assuming they've used the original music format, but it's entirely possible that the music's all like MP3s or something. It depends. It doesn't say anywhere on the box, and indeed there's no instruction manual, um, what you're supposed to run this in. It doesn't say if it just runs with the original DOS Doom, or whether it needs Boom, or maybe it even needs Z Doom, who knows. Uh, but I'm going to put this disc in my computer and see what we can see. So I've just had a look at this disc, which is still kind of a disc, but not really technically a disc. Um, and it includes a few different little items. It's got the WAD, of course. And it's got four different versions of the WAD. It's got, um, well, I wasn't sure it had to what am I doing? It's going to just fall through, isn't it? Yeah. So it had um, a normal version of the WAD, which I assume is uh, just going to be a normal Doom Muzz music format. Uh, and that was for megabytes. Uh, there was a compatible version, presumably that one's the one that works with DOS Doom. Again, same, same sort of size. And then there were the same again, but with I'm guessing MP3 versions of the soundtrack, which were both like 160 megabytes each. So that's uh, all well and good. Um, it seems like it gives you options for playing this game, which is great. Very, very, very good on you, John. Um, what else was there? There was the soundtrack, which makes sense, I suppose, if you don't have a CD drive. And what sort of savage wouldn't have a CD drive? Let me, bleh. And uh, there was also a little video that was behind the scenes. I haven't watched it yet because I'm still recording. <laughs> um, 
But I'll check that out and uh, I'll give you the update on that. Happy days, gents. <laughs> and as an added little bonus, the disc was 16 gigabytes in size, which is very generous. So, all in all, that is Sigil by our old friend John Romero. A new wad for Doom, a new unofficial official expansion. And uh, that just about covers that. It's a very nice piece to have. And I would say it's a good... Uh, I think it's a good addition to a Doom collection. A very small, uh, very slight Doom collection that currently only consists of, yeah, two pieces. <laughs> this and this ridiculous Depths of Doom, if you remember that. Yeah, that was not fun. Um, but it's a piece that not very many people end up having, so I'm happy to have it. It's quite nice, and hopefully the level is just as good as the box, because that would be good. Level by which I mean levels. So that just about covers that, uh, and I'll see you all for the next one. Cheerio. And of course I forgot to, so I'm going to do that. Well done me.